our prayers one more time for Sister Bennett. Did you hear the experience in the testimony? Amen. The foundation in the testimony. Amen. So young people, when, 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 when you are in Sunday school or your parents are talking to you at home, you're going to need that stuff. You're going to need that wisdom. Because there's going to come a time when your parents are not going to be around. And you may not be able to reach them by telephone. They could be busy. But you got to know how to pray for yourself and trust God on your own. And this is the time when you learn it. Did you catch the part about the study skills? Young people, did y'all hear that? To all the college students in the house, is it important to have study skills? Amen. So I think y'all heard Sister Reese a while ago talk about it. And even Sister Melissa, her sister, amen, is in college. Amen. Amen. And she knows about the study skills too. Amen. It's very, very important. So while you're in school now, study now. Get the reading down now. Because when you get to college, you're going to have to not only read a couple pages, you're going to have to read chapters. Books, chapters. By the time you go to class this week, by the time you get there next week, you're going to have to have at least five chapters already read. <laughs> so get it, get it in now. Amen. So clap my hands for Sister today. Amen. And she's just standing and trusting God. And I can never enjoy so come back. Amen. Give us another selection. Amen. Come on, we'll live with some joy. Let's clap our hands and receive them. Amen. Then we're going to hear from our next speaker. Amen.
drop our babies. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Don't be careless, but amen. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, man, we're going to receive our next speaker. Amen. And I got to know this young man on our, what, a few years ago when we went to VCU, um, Virginia Commonwealth University on a college trip. Amen. And, um, and he's very intelligent, very smart, young man, and he knows what he wants, and he knows where he's going. I believe he's active in JROTC, amen, I think he had his military ball this year and everything else. And so we're going to receive, amen, our very own brother, Incom James, amen. <laughs> chapter 2 verse 7 says so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot to the crown Job had the worst form of, of leprosy which caused all this pain and suffering but he still had faith yes. he had lost all of his crops and livestock but he still had faith If you look at chapter 2, verse 9, Job, chapter 2, verse 9, Job's wife is upset at him. She's frustrated. Job 2, 9 says, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. She was asking Job, Do you still believe in God? Do you still have faith in God, even though he's putting through all this hurt and pain? Over time, Job's condition got worse. But still he prayed to God to heal him. Job chapter 7, verse 21, it says that, And why dost thou not pardon my transgressions, and take away my iniquity? For now I sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. Yeah. Now in this passage, Job is asking God to forgive him for anything that he may have done to offend God, and to take away all this pain and suffering. So he keeps on crying out. But even in all this pain, he still believes that God will heal him. It proves his faith in Job chapter 19, verse 25. It says, For I know my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. This means that Job believes that God is alive. And if he dies today, he will go see him. He will go meet the Father. Now throughout the book of Job, it teaches us that suffering may occur for reasons that we don't understand. And so God reveals it to us, or we are able to understand that we are paying for our own sins. We will always reap what we sow. No matter what we do, we will pay the consequences. Like in John, like in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, where Jesus' disciples had asked him about a blind man. Jesus' disciples asked, Jesus, why is this man blind? Who sinned for this man to suffer blindness? Jesus then replied, It is God's will for this man to be blind. 
so that I may come down and heal this man from his blindness. But in the end, all we need to do to be delivered from sin, I mean, to, to be delivered from suffering, is that we need to ask for forgiveness, keep our faith strong, and always depend on God. Amen. 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 They're saved on their own, amen. They not, they not grab a hold to mommy, daddy's salvation, amen. They have salvation on their own. They know who God is for themselves, amen. So when Valerie told, so the Valerie told her daughter, you need to go pray. She already knew what prayer was, amen. Her mommy had a culture on how to pray. She said, okay, I got you. She went and prayed, amen. So I think that we have an awesome ministry, ministry, ministry of parents. Amen. And I'm not selfish, but taking the word to their homes. Amen. So this time, can we clap our hands and receive, amen, Brother David Vincent Jr. Amen. As he come forth, in the mighty name of Jesus. And after Brother David, you can hands of our bishop. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We can do a little bit better than that. I mean, we're talking about our risen Savior, our God, our Lord, our King, our Savior. He's an amazing God. He's a worthy God. He's a great God. I'm going to put a little uh, time that I have. My title would be, Are You Really a Believer? Where is your outward expression to, to your God? Like what I just asked you to praise the Lord. It took you a minute to respond. So if that is how you show your expression to your God, that just speaks on your relationship with God. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you really a believer? Can you give your God some praise? If you are a believer, stand to your feet and give God some praise. Give God what you think he deserves. Give God what you think he deserves. Express your relationship with God. Express your relationship with God. Are you a believer? to the double doors in the back. Don't just come in and sit down in your seat and enjoy the service. You gotta get, you gotta interact with the service. But that's not where I'm going. So I'm gonna speak on when I was talking about a believer and showing your outward expression towards God. And you all remember the story of Angel when the death angel came through the night and um, God had told him to put the blood on the doorpost and he won't kill you. So the blood on the doorpost means that there was an outward sign that there was a believer on the inside. Y'all didn't understand it, so I guess I'll repeat it again. The blood on the outside represents that there is a believer on the inside. When the guy goes through the neighborhood and saw the blood, the sickness will pass. Cancer will pass. Your deliverance will take place. When God sees the blood, you will make God. When you will make God, make you begin to change on yourself. 
Then they begin to change. The outward expression means that the, in, if that means to everybody in the city that there is a believer on the inside. The expression that you just showed towards God a couple of minutes ago showed that there's a believer on the inside, not just on the outside. That means you have a personal relationship with God. Not just the relationship you show when you come to Bible study or when you come to Sunday school or church. But on the days you don't come to church, the musicians aren't going to be here Monday through Friday. Um, they're not going to be at your job. So you got to have an expression towards God every time so people can see the light through you. And not, Amen. yeah. Amen. So, um, all right. Oh, um, hold on. I went ahead of myself. So, well, as I was talking about your expression towards God, your expression can be any form of praise and worship to your God. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about your praise and your worship. God is not moved by your problem, He is moved by your praise. The more you complain about your situation, God is going to sit there. If God gave you the situation, He knows you can handle it. He knows you can get through it. God, God, he does everything. God has his own timing. God is an on-time God. You hear it You hear it said all the time. God is truly an on-time God. He may not come when you want him to, but he will always be there. It may feel like God is not paying attention to you. It may feel like God is not listening to your prayers. It may just feel like God is not seeing you cry yourself to sleep at night. The problems that you, the, all, the secrets that you keep to yourself that nobody else knows about but God. God sees your pain. He hears your cry. He hears everything you're going through. You cannot give up on God. If you're a believer, you should already know the things he's done for you in the past can just prove that what he, what you're going through now is nothing compared to where he's taking you. So. And this is how we know that Jesus is real. All, out of all the things he's brought you, if you're in a situation right now and it doesn't look like you can get out, this is how you know God is real in your situation. The things he's brought you out before, it's, those were little things. But to you, they were big things. To God, it's like, oh, I just want to see if you can praise me in your situation. Can you worship me in your situation? Can you still give me praise even though it feels like you're about to lose everything that you have and you feel the sickness in your body? Can you still give me praise? Even though it feels like your world is turning upside down, can you still give me praise knowing that it looks like you're going to fail? Can you still give me praise knowing that school is a little hard? Can you still give me praise when work is a little tough? Can you still give God praise when people talk about it? And I was talking a little bit more about believers about the story when Peter had walked on the water. There was a storm on the water and everybody on the boat was panicking and Jesus was asleep. So that's proof to you right there that God is always there. He, and sometimes it may look like some of you may, and when I looked at the story, I was like, the storm was raging and, and, and Jesus was walking on the water and when Peter got out and he was believing in God, but once he looked away and tried to do it on his own, it didn't work out too good. So Jesus was just sitting there. He wasn't going to help. He said, your faith is in me. Why would you look away and try to do it on your own? I was bringing you out of it, but you wanted to try to do it on your own so you could get the glory. No, I got to get the glory out of it. And some of you are probably confused and trying to see why God is sleeping in your problem. The presence of your problem does not mean the actions of your God. The reason why God gave you that problem was to give you the ability and give you the faith that God can bring you through it. He can bring you out of it. He can push you through it. And I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'm sorry. And then the fact that you are enduring the storm is proof that he is there with you. Because you would have gave up by now, you would have thrown the towel by now, but for some reason you're still here. And while you're going through your situation, you're still here. You're not dead yet, you didn't give up maybe. There are times when you say, I want to give up, I want to give up, I just want to give up. But some reason, you're still here. That's enough right there just to throw your hands up and tell God, thank you, because you're still here. You didn't give up because you know. You may have a little doubt in your head that I won't get to the station, but get to the situation, but there's a little bit left in you saying, I know God is going to do it. My outward expression at the moment may be failure and not, may not might be trying, but God is working it out for your favor. You cannot give up. And is there anybody in here right now that's enduring a storm? That means that God is with you. If you're going through something right now, God is with you because your human nature would have gave up by now. And you're still here. That's the part. This is the part where you should be getting excited that you're still here. No matter how hard the situation is, you're still here. God didn't give up. You didn't give up. Like the song says, he's able. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. And then also, it says, Yea, through I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fail no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort thee. So God gives you verses, he gives you 
gives you encouraging words in the Bible. That's why you got to have a relationship with God. If you do not have a relationship with God and you try to do it on your own, things will not work out in your favor. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. It's just not going to go the way you can. You can be going and it may feel like it's going right, but keep on going and see how far you get. You ain't going to get that far. And even when you don't hear him, when you don't see him, when you don't feel his touch, you're, you're, he's there because you're not dead yet. You didn't give up. You didn't give up in your situation. You are more than a conqueror than Jesus Christ. And then I saw the story about the three Hebrew boys that were in the, the three Hebrew boys that were in the fire, and and I was thinking how when they were in the fire, they didn't get burned. They didn't let their situation dictate their praise to their God. So I took the story into my own way. When the Hebrew boys were in the fire. What amazed me about the story is that they were not affected by the fire. Some of you are dealing with situations right now. You're not affected by the problem because you got that peace of mind. You know that God is always there. And, what, and even the people who put them in the fire died. And they came out with no smoke, no ashes, no cut, no scars. Some people went through the same thing you went through. And they're dead and gone, but you are still here. You're still allowed today to tell your story. You're still allowed today to tell your testimony. Because you're going through a situation and you are not affected by it. I know your problem is real. I know your storm is real. I know your issue is real. I know school is real. I know life is real. I know work is real. I know all this stuff is great. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I have proof that I'm not affected by it. All you got to do is check your own praise. And you just praise God because the music is good. That's just an emotional feeling. You got to praise God just because you have the relationship with him. Because I'm a believer and I know for myself that I am going to get through this situation. No matter what everybody else is, no matter what it looks like, I'm going to get through. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to get through. You got to believe that they say it all and say, I'm going to get through.
be able to proclaim the word of God. Yeah. So I bring you to a couple points of points of power of prayer. I have some information and then I passed out before and I'm going to pass out before you again just to give you a couple of instructions. If you would turn with me to Isaiah. 26th chapter. I'm sorry, I said Isaiah 26th chapter, but Isaiah the 54th chapter. And the 13th verse. The reason why I wanted to uh, have the young people to come up and be able to, to, to speak. And I want to share with you the relationship of the teaching of sharing God's word with them beyond Sunday. And the promise, and I want you to incorporate this into your prayer life. Incorporate it into your prayer life. We've been talking a lot about prayer and the intercessory prayer. These are the things that I want you to begin to expound and to incorporate. There's power in prayer. God's word is awesome. All by itself. His word is awesome by itself. And the absence of his word is the present of defeat in your life. Because God showed us through his word of how to defeat the enemy. He showed us in Matthew, the fourth chapter. Very vividly. Would you just lay your hands, lay your hands on her chest, Sister Agnes? Lay your hands on her chest, right now, by, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, crucified. I, I bind, praise God, Hallelujah, very respiratory issues right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, Hallelujah, by your stripes, Hallelujah, praise be the name of the Lord. Release it right now. Bring forth healing. A complete healing in the name of Jesus, by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At His word, at His word, at His word, at His word, at His word. Before I begin to share these few nuggets with you, I want you just to stand and rest on your feet for a moment, and I want you to take notice of something. I want you to take notice that you are confident that you are not standing on quicksand. You're not, you're confident that you're not standing on quicksand. That you're standing on a solid rock right now. Concrete, without a shadow of a doubt, it didn't even register in your mind that where you were standing would not be able to support you. And this is where God wants to be in His Word. Knowing that His Word will support us. The only way that you will be able to incorporate that thought in your process of your mind is with the relationship in prayer and studying in His Word of the strength of the foundation of what God says. Because oftentimes when He speaks His Word, we don't see the manifestation take place at that moment but his word had already declared and is already in process. And yet, while we are still praying, he's answering. But when we don't see the results here in the natural right away, then sometimes we find we get weary in well-doing and we begin to do other things. This is why he said, don't faint. You will reap if you faint not. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. Let me just read you these two scriptures, three scriptures. In Isaiah, the 54th chapter, and I want you to underline this, put it in your Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, if the earth just gave you a Bible, you want to keep that Bible, keep that Bible. With dog ear on, on your book, and I want you to incorporate this into your prayer. This is for our children. This is for the people in your house. This is for those that you don't, that's not saved. Praise God. And wherever it is, maybe for your nephews, your nieces, wherever it is, praise God. And I want you to hear... 
He said, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Did you hear what I just said? What did I just say? Amen. So, first of all, I want you to understand that God has spoken here. God has spoken here, and from him speaking here, even before you was born, and even that you have come in right now to read this into the, to your acknowledgement right now, even when he spoke it then, and you weren't even born, he had made it available to speak to you right now. Amen. Praise God. So right now, where you are right now, this is what God is speaking to you and saying, And all your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. So what I'm trying to have you understand, praise God, and those that have came in and proclaimed the gospel message and shared, praise God, based on the relationship and based on the upbringing that they was uh, founded upon, praise God, don't discount that. Don't discredit that. Don't take that away. Increase it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. What are you saying? Praise God. If you want that peace of God to follow them, praise God, make sure that that word of truth is in them, that they can come and proclaim it. Yes. Amen. Every fourth Sunday, we want the young people to proclaim it. We want them to have the opportunity to share it. Are you hearing? So they can feel confident when they're confident with us, when they get out of our presence, when they be in his presence. When the enemy comes up like a storm, guess what? Praise God, they will have the confidence and the evidence, praise God, to be able to declare it. Praise God, it's interesting that we would do everything, praise God, and I know that to be true. Even my own family, praise God, even with my son's children, praise God, even Jacob having the basketball games and going through that. And I remember last year, praise God, and was going here, and after service, we had to dash out of here, get him to a game, or get his uniforms and get his shoes and do this and taking the basketball practice and, and all those things and everything that he would ever gain from there, praise God, is experience while he walked on this earth. But the most important thing that he needs is the spiritual part. Praise God, you hear what I'm saying? The priority, the priority saints. Are you hear what I'm saying? Praise God, make sure that they have it embedded in their heart. More importantly, make sure it is embedded in your heart. When you are riding a 747, they always remind you, praise God, any event, praise God, of some turbulence, and the mask come down, they say to put the mask on you first, and then the heat to those that are beside you. Because you won't be able to help them, praise God, if you're unconscious. So I'm saying to you today, teach it to your children. Proclaim this. Proclaim this. How do you feel, sister? Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all your children shall be taught. Praise God. In other words, you want, how many of you want your children to have the peace of God? Hallelujah. Praise God. You have the power to nourish and change the outcome of your child. Are you hear what I'm saying? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. So teach it to them. Praise God. And all your children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. Praise God. In other words, if you teach them this, praise God, they will know this. And then they will respond to this. Because we are all, praise God, the victims of our upbringings. Amen. Yes. You teach them how to walk right. And part of that teaching, praise God, not just telling it, but living it. They learn more about our lives by what they see than more than what it is that we teach. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm almost done. The young people done a good job. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This is one that the Lord put in my notes in 1 in King, the 11th chapter. And it said in the ninth verse, and it's talking about Solomon. And, and you all know the story about Solomon. How many of y'all know the story about Solomon? Solomon. He was this, the third king of Israel. Amen. It was Saul, then it was David, then David, then it was Solomon. Solomon was the son of David. And, and Solomon sought the wisdom of God. And Solomon was declared to be the wisest man that was known 
praise God, in the, in the scriptures, in a reference to that, amen, praise God, and, and he sought with the wisdom of God when, when, he be, when he received the reins of this anointing of the position to be king, he, he sought after God and said, Lord, praise God, give me wisdom that I will be able to deserve to be able to lead your people. He didn't ask for money, he didn't ask for uh, cars or chariots and all that, he asked for wisdom, yes, praise man. God, praise God, to lead and to guide your people. You've given me this responsibility, so with that responsibility, you're going to have to equip me to be able to do it. Praise God. But here, praise God, in this particular chapter, praise God, it become the demise of Solomon. All that wisdom that he had, he still allowed things to distract him and pull him away from the things that he was taught. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. And the Lord, in the ninth verse, he said, And the Lord was angry with Saul because his heart was turned from the Lord, God of Israel, which has appeared unto him twice. Praise God. And hath commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded him. Praise God. I want you to notice, he said, And the Lord was angry with Saul because his heart was turned from the Lord. God of Israel, which had appeared unto him. So in other words, God, praise God, in his love, is God is love, praise God, God had to, praise God, listen, I want you to understand this, God had to do a lot of feeling to be angry with him. Are you hear what I'm saying? God had to do a lot of anger, praise God, to be angry. <coughs> God had to do a lot of bending in order to be angry with his child. Praise God, so what I'm trying to help you to encourage, praise God, that God chasing those that he loved, Praise God, but it's like a father to his son, praise God, unto his children, praise God. It hurts me to discipline you. Teach it to your children. And children, when you grab it, and when you hold fast to it, and when you hold it, don't move from it. Don't move away from it. Don't change from it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't text in service. Praise God. And don't move from it. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is good. He's simply worthy to be praised. Praise God. And listen, in my last verse is in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Amen. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, starting at the sixth verse. You just read that for us real quick. The sixth verse. Amen. Deuteronomy 6, verse 6. Uh -huh. And these words which I command thee this day uh -huh. shall be in thine heart. Uh-huh. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy listen, children. Listen to what he's saying. Listen to what he's saying. Listen to what he's saying. How many of y'all want the peace of God to be on your children? Amen. 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 Praise God. Because how many of y'all know that children are an inheritance of the Lord? Amen. How many of y'all want to be there? In God bless us with children. Amen. Praise God. But he entrusts us. This is a sign that he's given to us. Teach it to your children. Amen. But if, if you don't know it yourself, you are endangering your own child. Amen? If you don't study it yourself, if you don't get yourself in a situation where you're receiving the word of God, you are endangering your own child, praise God, and inheritance that God had entrusted for you. Amen? Praise God. And these words which I command you, this day shall be in your heart. Praise God. He said, listen, I want you to understand it. Praise God. When you understand it, teach it to the children. Read on. And thou shalt teach them them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So, in other words, it should be part of your lifestyle. Your house should be conducive for learning the word of God. Praise God. He said, do it diligently, not haphazardly. Praise God. Not just part of the time. Not only when there's trouble arise and you take them into the scripture. It should be a part of their lives. It should be a part of who they are. Blessed be the name of the Lord, praise God. It should be a part, praise God, of your life, praise God, and that's transcend. This is the inheritance that you are transcending all the way back down to them. This is the anointing that you are passing all the way down to your children, praise God, praise God. You are making sure that they understand the way of God, amen, praise God, to the point where it's very strong, praise God, that anyone else from the outside cannot influence their thought. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the eighth verse says what? And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, uh -huh. and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Amen. Praise God. In the Jewish custom, one of the things that you see the Orthodox Jews, actually, praise God, when they have their uh, bar mitzvah or whatever, 
Praise God. They had to understand the, the five books of the Bible. They had to read it all the way through. And this is a custom of the Jewish custom. Praise God. They had to know it. Praise God. And literally, they did have a box on their head, or they had it on their hand, which it had scriptures in it. They had the, the scripture, the, the Pentateuch that was in there, praise God, that they had to remember. Amen. Why did it, well, why was it important for them to remember? Jump over to the 20th verse. Amen. Amen. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. And when thy son asked thee in time, to come saying, what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, when we, we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Listen, if we do not tell them how good God is, praise God, all that history will be lost. Amen. You got to tell them, praise God, from which way you have came and God delivered you. You got to tell them, praise God, where you was going and you was on your way to hell and God delivered you. You got to tell them, praise God, praise God, that your mind was messed up, praise God, and God delivered you. Praise God, praise God. So they, they will have it. They didn't want to have to go and re repeat that same course, praise God, because that, therefore that's how they get followed in peace, praise God, because they have knowledge and they don't have to repeat the history that you have went through. They need to know the power of God's hand. They need to know when trouble rises and they begin to pray. They begin to intercede. They begin to thank God. They begin to bless the Lord. Praise God. They begin to recognize the power. Even in their own little world, praise God, they begin to learn to hear his voice. They begin to learn to recognize the call of God. They begin to learn, praise God, to allow the Lord to minister to them richly. Praise God. And deeply, praise God. In their own little lives, praise God. They need to know that God is good all the time. Not just in... 2013, but he's good in 2015. Not in this 1961 he was good. Praise God, but he's good right now. They need to know, praise God, that how good God is in all the time that God is good. Praise God. And the Lord showed signs and wonders and, and great sores and upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from this, that that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. And he said, they, they, they weren't there, but you are responsible for making sure they know this truth. You're responsible for creeping atmospheres in your house where you are actually going and you're ministering the gospel knowledge and the word of Jesus Christ. Praise God, that is in the life of your children. And when you do that, praise God, your children will have the peace of God that pass all understanding. Praise God, they will be able to walk. Praise God, they will be able to recognize how to walk in the favor of God, how to walk in the kingdom of God. Praise God, but you yourself need to have hold fast to that responsibility, too, that you will be able to learn to walk in the things of God. Amen. Praise God. In my thought and my closing, here's something I want to share with you, praise God, also in your prayer. I'm going to pass these out as I have done before. Praise God. I want to just read this real quick. Amen. Praise God. As the uh, deacons just come and take these verses and just pass these out, if you will, if you're so kind to do so. Oftentimes, when we share uh, knowledge that God gives us to, to pass on to you all, it may last for a day, it may last for two days, or you may reach for it during crisis, or whatever the case may be. Praise God. But I, I want this to be rich and deep in your, your spirit. And Ursus, can you all help them also? Can you move to this? Praise God. Praise Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is good. Simply worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen.
Amen. And this is what he said. This time, this time I want you to hold it. Put it on the refrigerator. Put it on the mirror. Uh, put it wherever you, you need to put it at to make sure that this becomes part of your life and, and include this into your prayer life. And I'm going to give you some instructions. This is what he says. He said, for this cause we also, this is Paul speaking, since the day we have heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And do and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the, in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. I pause there because I want you to begin to incorporate this in, in your, your, your prayer life. And I want you to incorporate this in the prayer life. First of all, I want you to pray for your own head, your own mind. Amen. I want you to pray this prayer. Praise God. This is Paul saying this is our praying for them. And he's showing us here, praise God, that we might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This is my prayer for this house. Amen. So I want you to join me in prayer. Praise God that you will pray, amen, every morning. Praise God that this thought be in your prayer. Lord, fill me with the knowledge that will understand your will, with wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. 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 When we pray in the Spirit, when we pray in the Word, we are praying in the Spirit of God's Word. And what we are praying, we are agreeing to what God has already said. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. Praise God. Here, and he said, that you might walk worthy of the Lord to all pleasing and being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Praying, praise God, that your knowledge and your thirst will increase in knowledge of God's word. Amen. Because as we approach the end times, you will need more knowledge of God's wisdom and his word. Also, the 11th verse, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power and to all patience, patience and long suffering with joyfulness. So we're going to pray for God's strength. Who needs God's strength? God's strength will enable you when you feel like you just can. Amen? It will enable you, praise God, and, and I told you me going to the gym and we're working out, praise God, and doing different things for to, to strengthen my health and things of that nature, praise God. But when it gets to the point when I do 30 reps, and sometimes I get right down to that 27 one and it looks like I can't do any more, but then I just keep on pushing for to go through. When you in life, when you get to that place where you feel like you just can't. God's strength will enable you because it's imperative that you get this. So we pray in God's strength. Amen. That you don't be discouraged and that you don't quit and that you don't faint. That you have the strength to continue the task that he has assigned to you. Amen. And giving thanks unto the Father which had made us meet to partake of the missing inheritance of the saints in life. Amen. So we are praying for God's knowledge of his will. In other words, we need to understand his will. Praise God. And the knowledge of His will, praise God, and spiritual understanding. When you receive this knowledge and wisdom and spiritual understanding, then you will be able to weigh into the vision of the ministry also all at the same. Amen. Now, the first thing I want you to do is begin to pray this over your mind. Amen. The second thing I want you to do, I want you to identify five people. Amen. That you want to begin to pray this for them also. Amen. Five people, praise God. If you you know how some things can frustrate you, even on your job or maybe at the church, whatever, I want you to be able to pray God's wisdom 
on, on them. Amen? If they don't, pray for your leaders. Pray for your boss. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pray for your boss. Pray for us. God has put us in the prayer. He said, pray for all men. Praise God. And as, as we pray, praise God for leaders even of this world. Praise God. He said there, there will be peace among us. Amen. So when we don't exercise this ability, when the righteous don't pray, when the righteous don't pray, praise God, move in the things that God has told us, praise God, then we begin to lose the focus point. Praise God, then we begin to lose the battle. As the little kids were singing, praise God, this mean war. The kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence take it by force. This mean war. You're not going to take my family. You're not going to take my children. You're not going to affect me here. In spite of what I may be experiencing on my job, you proclaim the word of God. And as uh, David was saying about the Hebrew boys, they was not touched. Even though those had actually had came up against them, praise God, hallelujah, they had fallen and stumbled and fall. praise God, but none had came towards their dwelling. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we begin to pray this, praise God. I want you to, to, to focus on these, these things that I shared with you a couple months ago, and I'm sharing with you again. The Lord purpose in my heart again when I started seeing some of the issues begin to surface. Praise God, we need to stay focused and continue in prayer one for another. Amen. In every area of life, pray for your spouse, pray for your husband, pray for your children, proclaim the gospel, pray this word. Praise God, pray for the ministry, pray for the leaders in the ministry, pray for, praise God, that they will walk in wisdom and knowledge and spiritual understanding. Praise God, pray. Hallelujah, President, because God has given us the word. When you don't know what to pray, this is why I'm giving this to you right now. So now you know what to pray for. Yes. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank God. Praise God for our children. children. Praise God for claiming and sharing the message. We thank God. Praise God for the things that we shared on today. Praise God. Take this knowledge and take this. When you begin to see the results start taking place, then you're going to go deeper into your prayers. Amen? It's going to empower your prayer life even that much more. Praise God. It ain't about the emotional things. Sometimes we get caught up in the, in the emotional frenzy of things and, and we leave from there. Praise God. Pray until you know something happened. Push. Praise God. Push. Meaning pray. Pray until you see something happen. Praise God. Don't just leave it on the table and table it. Praise God. Continue in prayer earnestly until you see some results. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The word of God said, men shall always pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to encourage you, praise God, to, to come out to the, to the training, the teaching that we are doing on praying, praise God, and also intercessory praying, praise God. It's going to impact your life, praise God, as we approach the last days, even in your home, carry this, praise God, move, move in the spirit of the Lord, praise God, and, and stand in the power of his might. How do we stand in the power of his might? We stand in according to his word. Not by our words. Your words is not going to mean anything. Praise God, your words will come out and you'll be frustrated. Praise God, but stand in the power of his might. And that's by the power of God's word. Amen. God bless. Let's all rest on our feet. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If anyone desires prayer today, this morning, 